I think it's about time and uh, we can start uh, as I hope uh, more attendees would be joining as we move forward. Uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon to everybody and thank you for taking time for uh, joining this uh, session and discussion about uh, class. Uh, class, as you would know, is world's first tool for synchronous online learning tool. But before we move on further, you see two logos on the screen. One is Edutech and the other one class. So of course the relationship uh, is that of partnership. Uh, Edutech is a proud partner of uh, class in the uh, Middle Eastern region. Uh, before we uh, get on to uh, more details about class, uh, some more introduction about uh, Edutech. So Edutech, uh, since the year 1991, has been at the forefront of providing uh, groundbreaking technology solutions for educational institutions. We take pride in serving institutions of uh, all kinds, uh, the government, academic, K-12, uh, what have you. So we have, uh, we have been able to serve uh, the, the clients from uh, across verticals in solutions uh, such as the classroom technology, uh, library management systems, the learning management systems, lecture capture systems, uh, the, the STEAM labs, uh, as well as uh, uh, other laboratory solutions as well. We have uh, existence in most of the uh, GCC countries, although we are headquartered in Dubai, as many of you would know, but uh, uh, my colleagues uh, are very much there in offices in Qatar, Oman, Saudi Arabia, and uh, other uh, countries. In the region, we have uh, over 50 uh, partnerships in terms of providing education solutions and thousands of clients, as we have already spoken. And I'm glad to say that most of the names that I see in the attendee list, I have been able to interact with them in one form or the other, or for one solution or the other over uh, previous uh, years. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to uh, Massimo. Uh, Massimo uh, is uh, the uh, the regional head of uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa at CLASS. So, uh, Masim, over to you. Thank you, Sanjay, for the introduction. And actually, thank you for uh, to EduTAC uh, to organize this webinar today and to all attendees. Um, it's definitely a pleasure for me. As Sanjay mentioned, um, I'm leading the operations across Europe, Middle East, and Africa on behalf of CLASS technology. So um, in order to get started, before we jump into a product demonstration, um, I would like just to use some quick slides. I promise it's not gonna be boring, just a quick slides to give an introduction about what the company really does today. Let's get started with the education landscape. And as we all know, the pandemic has forced institutions all over the world actually, to, um, you know, to implement educational technology at a much, much more, you know, uh, let's say, uh, extended, uh, you know, format, let's say, uh, in particular virtual classroom solutions. So looking at Zoom in education, Zoom as at, uh, a ver as experience of vertical growth, and now we see that uh, a lot of instructors and students, you know, feel definitely much more confident using technology although there is definitely something that we are missing today. So what it is, you know, what it is that, that they're really missing today? I mean, a year ago, um, Michael Chazen, the, you may know him as uh, the founder of Blackboard and all their education technology solution companies, um, was looking at the market and realized that there was definitely a missing piece um, if you consider the virtual communication and collaboration. So looking at the virtual classroom solution or the video conference solution that we we'll use out there, he believed that uh, there was no one really delivering all the key areas of functionalities that the structures and teachers require today in order to have a you know, kind of one-stop solution where you can find all you need. So class was created uh, a year ago. Now, um, don't look at class as a typical startup, let's say, because Michael Coles at the senior management team has been working before, put people together, look at the market out there. We, and class did a reinvent from scratch, let's say the video conferencing component, selected a few platforms, 
and, uh, and, and the choice was definitely on Zoom. So on the Zoom SDK, we created class. So class is a, is a separate platform from Zoom, but a platform that perfectly integrate with Zoom and with Zoom only. So basically we leverage what Zoom has today. Plus we have a redesigned interface to make it look like a virtual class environment and added areas of functionality that definitely are not present in Zoom. So looking at how institutions are doing it today, I mean, a lot of institutions we see that they're using video conferencing solutions uh, or so-called virtual classroom solutions that in any case were not designed to support educational activities. We see that compared to what you can do in a physical classroom, so a lot of the actions and interactions you can have with your student as an instructor, um, like one-to-one -one discussion, you can have group presentations, you actually can run an evaluation and, and, and do an exam. Actually, on site, you can have a layer of security, and at the same time, you can uh, have a full traceability of all the people that are in the physical room, so you can divide them and word them in groups. There are a lot of things that you do to make it very, uh, you know, a very engaging experience. When we move this into a virtual environment, uh, we see that you know, the majority of those uh, actions actually are missing simply because you don't have uh, the functionalities that can enable the instructor to drive the class in a way you know, uh, that would allow them to replicate what they can do in a physical classroom. You can have a fantastic video conferencing solution, but then if you want to do content sharing, for example, uh, you need to just share your screen, then you're going to lose all the functionalities around to have a live interaction. So these are many other things uh, definitely pushed, uh, actually, uh, class to create you know, this platform, which is a very extended platform. and. Uh, and it's just all you need, actually, in order to track the attendance, do presentation, do the assessments, do the, have a great book, have an errors with the analytics and everything. And that's what we're going to see, be seeing today, actually. So it's, it's this extended classroom. And uh, looking, at, uh, looking at that, uh, before we, you know, we jump into this, normally we say welcome to class, but I wanted to show you just this quick interface which is what you have when you access class as a standalone model. And now you see that this looks familiar to you. Uh, I, I'm, I guess that many of you are Zoom users. So you see that uh, this is customized class, but you could have a client, easily a client logo there. And from here you could create actually classes, scheduled. Uh, you can implement that over several different courses. And, and then we can actually in this specific case today, we want to launch a demo class. But instead of showing you an empty classroom, we have created a sandbox. So that's why you see this blue button here, launch demo class, to allow you to have a better understanding of what the experience will be like. So let me just stop this sharing now. And I want to launch my interface. So you're going to be able to see it. Um, so now you're looking at my screen. I actually entered our sandbox and I'm entered, you know, I have entered actually as an instructor. And this is exactly what I found. So first of all, let me walk you through the main components and then we can go granularly into some of the, let's say, key features and functions. Obviously, we're not going to cover all of that today because we would need <laughs> that much more time to go through that. But we're going to be definitely available uh, and in this case you know Edutech has set up the webinar is engaged with you and Edutech team will be definitely more than happy to engage with you on an individual basis to assist you on, uh, on this but today we're gonna look at uh, let's say the main component so on the top left corner you see myself and just waving a year just simply to show you that I'm alive actually in the sandbox environment while all the students and, and, and the structure you see there are obviously part of the simulations. But this is actually class. That's the class layout. That's how an instructor will see it. And that's pretty much how a student also will see it. Um, and, uh, and we'll see actually what would be the main difference between an instructor and, uh, and a student. But overall, because you're a, you're a Zoom user, you know what a host and co-host and participants are in terms of role when you're using 
Zoom, so in class we have mapped the roles, so you have an instructor, you know, the instructor is the teacher, is the professor, and this is mapped to the host, and then you have teaching assistants mapped to the co-hosting role, and then you have the students with similar privilege, privileges as, as the participants, and, and obviously they can do more than that. So uh, if you go right below, I have decided, and I want to stress this point, I have decided simply because as an instructor, I believe, for example, that I need another camera so I can just plug it in and just, you know, with the link to this classroom, I can show, for example, this additional camera pointing to a blackboard, as in this case, or maybe it's pointing to my desk, or it could be pointing to a lab bench, whatever I want, and I can just pin it under the instructor. Now, if I want to just, you know, to have all the attention of the student just on that piece of content I want to share, I just click on those, you know, three little dots that you can see at the top right corner of each video. And because I'm an instructor, I could decide simply to pin it. So I see it now in the main center of the screen. When I don't need it anymore, I could actually put it back or I could just, you know, I could just unpin it over here. And, uh, and this will go back, to, for example, the gallery view, or I could actually even go there and remove it if I don't need the camera. Uh, in, a, in a similar way, you know, I could add definitely, you know, more cameras. It really depends on uh, how I want to use, um, you know, the additional cameras inside the classroom. Point is, you don't need to create fake accounts in order to have these additional cameras. Uh, because then you're going to have analytics, for example, analytics will track down the experience of each user inside the, the classroom. Here it's just about plugging it in and then you have it. You can have a class cam, you can have uh, um, a, an instructor cam, you can definitely easily have additional cameras. Now, below that, in this case, uh, I, you know, I decided not to pin anything under the instructor. I just go straight to the main areas of functionalities. I mean, to, the main areas where I can actually find exactly what I need in a specific location. So we see that the first tab, I see four tabs actually. The first tab is called participants, is highlighted in blue. And then I see the second tab, chat. Third tab, class management tools, where we're gonna see all the statistics and reporting things. And then I have teaching tools. Now, going back to what I was saying before, what is the main difference between a structured view and a student view is that when I have teaching tools, because I'm an instructor, the student will have student tools and they have fewer functionalities there. But what is important is that they have the necessary functionalities that they require in order to participate into the into the activities actually, you know, that the, the structure is gonna launch. So it can interact with the other students as well. And they won't have access to the class management tools because only the structure can access that area. Now, before we go granularly into each one of the tab, let's, let's see, uh, let's go through the right. And we see that, you know, first of all, what I see immediately is a gallery view. So that's what I see when I enter the class, right? I see all the students that I have over there. Right below that, you see that actually the interface is showing me, you know, the audio, the video, the possibility to record the session and then obviously reuse it. Um, I can have actually a tab to have quick reactions and every student will be able to do that or, or raising hands. So when I raise hands, if I click on raising hands, you see that there is a little, yellow hand that, you know, is actually popping up on the top right corner of the video. If I click it, it's going away. Uh, this is important because when the students actually start, they want to start asking questions, then I can visually immediately catch them over there and I see, you know, which ones have reserved the spot uh, to, uh, you know, to ask questions. Um, let's go on the upper part. We see that there is something that we call, you know, the, the front of the room, basically, where you see another instructor and two assistant assistants. I mean, again, class is allowing the structures to have the options to organize or reorganize continuously the class and the city charts, as we see. But in this case, I have decided to have an instructor and assistant. Um, from row means that when I start sharing content, as in this case, if I launch a piece of content over here, I can still decide to have a structure and other assistance always available and present there in video and audio, just, you know, a 
available. But when I go back to the classroom, you know, I will have it there, or if I decide not to have it there, I could just remove it. On the top right corner, I have the ability to select speaker view or gallery view. If I select speaker view, for example, it's gonna show just the person that is talking. In this environment now, I'm the only one really alive present. So that's why it's showing, it's showing me talking or I can keep it uh, on a gallery view. I have actually also other options, uh, attendee view on and off. Now it's off, uh, but uh, actually I could decide whether I want them to have exactly the same view that I'm having today now, the one that I'm sharing with you, or I want to allow them, you know, to select the review. It just up to me to decide which one you know, I, I prefer to have. And another functionality is actually that could be good to, to consider is the, is the privacy mode. So basically it's possible to allow the students to select on and off in terms of uh, showing or not showing their video. Now we know that when you do some online uh, lectures or, or webinars or activities, um, often actually it's kind of mandatory to show the video to the structure. So it's a way to recognize the identity as well. Yeah. So um, here, if you do on and off, because maybe the student doesn't feel comfortable showing his face to the rest of the students or for any other uh, respectable reason, we allow them to select that if they put privacy on, only the structure will see the video but actually all the students will not be able to see the video of that specific student. So in this way, you know, we have the level of security and the compliance with the policies they're gonna be using to show the video, but you know, we preserve, let's say the privacy of, of, of that student. Now uh, let's move to the other um, scroll down menu here called sitting chart. This is something available only to, um, to the instructors. So here they can decide how to reorganize the students. So they could reorganize it in alphabetical order, for example, or maybe by hand raised. That's what I mentioned before. When you start raising hands, then you know, how can you spot immediately which one did it first or, or second or third? So if you click raising hands, you see that the system now has reorganized the list of all the students. And you see, you know, Jordan, Tia, Jimmy, Vanessa, I mean, you see the order that they're following, which is the chronological order. So I see exactly which one should be allowed to talk first and the second and the third one and, and so forth. I can actually do uh, a, a few other things uh, over here uh, where I can reorganize the students and I could also reorganize the front row. So now I have, for example, the assistant, the structures. I could decide to have some students with the role of presenter or maybe remove that as presenters. Uh, for example, I have this, uh, this student called Vanessa. I can move her to make her a presenter. So you see that there is this uh, pink, actually, uh, you know, color say presenting, and then I could go actually to sit in charts, select front of the room and put presenter. So this is gonna show the presenter always actually, uh, you know, is identifiable by the rest of the, of, of the student, the rest of the class. So if I'm in an activity where these three students needs to talk about a specific piece of content, as in this case, and share some content, so all the students will see the, the video of those students, they can listen to the audio, they can see to the content that you know, is being shared and discussed at this specific moment. But at the same time, it is just one click away to go back to the tab where I can see all the students. So by click by doing this, you know I'm introducing actually an additional functionality that you will not really find uh, anywhere else in terms of you know virtual classroom solution today, which is the navigation by using the tabs like in a browser. Now today, when you're launching an activity or a content or a piece of content, you're doing something you know inside a virtual classroom or a video conferencing platform, um, you can actually share the screen or maybe you can launch something but then you need to stop it relaunch it again here uh, the system is just launching a new tab so in the new tab you will see actually the additional activities or content that is being shared and uh, and you can decide actually how to do it for example if you don't want this front room over there you can actually uh just, just move it and uh, and take away you know the front room and see and use all the all the space for the content that you want to share 
but still can go back to the castle. Now, this is just a, a, a overall you know, introduction to the main component of the interface. As you can see, it's, it's pretty much, a, a, let's say, a classroom layout. But let me go back to the four tabs. First of all, let's start with participants. I know that some people will have questions. Um, I think we prefer to keep the questions, you know, through the end. So ask your questions in the Q&A sections, you know, of, uh, of, of the Zoom interface that we're using today. And then, you know, once I finish with this introduction, I'm going to be more than happy to, to answer a few questions. Now, let's go through the participants. So uh, let's consider, as I say, that I'm an instructor and I've just entered this room. By the way, this is my virtual classroom. So this is my virtual classroom for this specific course. This means that as I have normally a physical room, I have a kind of all the keys of my room, right? And I could have even uh, shelves where I can put some books, material stuff, everything, you know, in a, in a physical environment. This is actually my virtual environment. It could be my course of biology, business administrations, or literature, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You can have every room for every course where you're teaching. So here, under the list of participants, I will, the system is telling me immediately, I don't need to do anything. I just look at that and the system is telling me in this room, there are two people with the role of instructors, and I say three people in the presenting group, two uh, teaching assistants, and then very important is telling me there are 19 students present. And then if you scroll down, it's telling me that there are also actually three students absent. So what's happening here? All the students, uh, actually even the structure, but all the students have their own credentials we could integrate the list of the students in each course with this specific virtual classroom. And we're using just, you know, email address and names. If we do it on a standalone model, we just, you know, if we click on uh, class management tools, I click on class roster, and you see that this is actually popping up a new window. Let me, uh, let me reshare my screen in full because I want you to see see the full, um, exactly. Now you should be able to see actually, um, you know, there's additional window um, that is popping up where I can click on edit students and there you see that I can actually have the students over here and, um, and then, you know, uh, I can add them directly into the system. Or I can simply integrate it with your learning management system. This means that if you're using, for example, Moodle, Canvas, Blackboard, Sakai, any uh, student um, learning management system that is using um, LTI integrations, we could perform a single sign-on and integrate class into all the courses. This means same credential. So when a student gets into your learning management system with their credential, just with username and password, and then they can go to all the courses where they're enrolled. It could be 20 different courses. Now, if it, when they go into each one of the courses, they could find the, the virtual classroom related there. I mean, they see the link. If they click, they just jump into that. They don't need to be verified again. And the system will track all of them. So the system is actually tracking all of that, all the traceability. What happens then? If I scroll down, I see here that there are two students that, um, that have a little, you know, red dot, you see, with exclamation marks. And if I go actually on top of students, you will see the, the blue button say more. Now, the system is flagging me that there are two students that have never been here before, apparently. Okay, it could be, or it could be different. But let's say that this Lilia Vasquez, for example, Lilia is now into a kind of, uh, I wouldn't call it exactly a way to rule because she can see the content, but uh, she cannot do anything else. She cannot interact with anybody except for the instructor. So Lilia Vasquez is unverified. So if I click here on more, the system will allow me to verify this person as a new student. So I see that maybe this person has just joined later, you know, this, this course, not from the first lesson. So I can just click verify Lilia and the second time she will try to get in, I won't have to verify her again. 
Now, Joe Walton, this other guy over here, right? it could be an existing student, but he's using somebody else's computer. So it's important to actually have the same credential in order to be traced completely, not just for this session, for, for example, to all the session of the semesters and then to run reporting. So it could be verified as a new student, but if he's not in the list of the, sorry, on the existing students, but if somebody that uh, has kind of, uh, you know, got hold of this link to get into this room. And I know that a lot of institutions, you know, have experienced that in the past with many video conferencing solutions. Somebody was trying to get in and try to disturb the lessons and everything. So here, this person is not really able to do anything and you could remove it if the, per the student is not authorized to be there. Once removed, that person, you know, cannot even try again, you know, with the same computer. Uh, or, or, or account, so they need to use something else. This is adding an additional layer of security. Now, if I click on class management tool now, and I click simply to attendance, I will see that, you know, this is a new window popping up. And this is showing me for today's sessions, it's showing me the list of the students. And then all the students actually that are expected to be in this course, it will tell me also the absent one, as you can see, and it will tell me the time in, the time out and everything. I could actually even click and go more granularly on an individual level. Uh, now for the simulation, you see actually, you know, uh, the different students, you can pop them up, but you could go and run reporting also for the semester. So you can have uh, a full tracking and then everything can be actually downloaded. Now that's what happens, you know, how we manage, let's say, the users. And uh, as, as many of you, uh, probably the, the, the large majority of you will use a learning management system, we recommend to use an integration with the learning management system. Uh, it's also, you know, the, the best way to make things easier for your uh, admin, for your instructors, because everything is going to be integrated with Sync Credential. Now, let me go to uh, the second tab where we can see the chat area. Now, if I go to the chat area, uh, the chat worked in a very similar way as it was today on uh, Zoom. Uh, what is important is that the structure can decide who the students can, can chat with. So you can allow actually them to chat just with the instructors, uh, also on an individual basis, or can chat with everybody, um, basically inside the room. It just up to this, uh, to the instructor to decide how to move on. Now, before we go again into class management tools, I think we, uh, I'd like to jump into teaching tools because that's the area uh, where uh, the instructors, and I understand that you know, in our audience today, there are definitely several instructors and professors. They wanna see how easy it is actually to use, to use this tool because we promise to deliver actually lots of functionalities and actually we do, but we leave all the complexity behind. So at the end of the day, although we support, you know, and at, at the beginning, uh, when, when we sign up a new client, we provide also um, training services. And, um, and for example, with, uh, with a client that is actually purchasing access to, uh, to class through our partner EduTech, we actually have EduTech as a certified training partner that is gonna allow you uh, actually to get access to uh, a lot of, uh, um, I'd say a lot of material, best practices and everything. So we have all this type of components because we're definitely not here just to sell some software, we're here to partner with you. So here you can find the main areas of functionalities I'm going over quickly now, um, that an instructor needs. So syllabus is the first one. Syllabus, if I click on syllabus, uh, the system is actually launching something that I have preloaded, that I have prepared before entering this room. So I'm sharing a Google Doc now but it could be actually, you know, a PDF, could be a PowerPoint, a Google Slide, you know, a, a lot of formats. If I go on almost on the top uh, right corner here, I see that there is this button called Update Syllabus. Now, I could remove the current syllabus, I could click on Choose Files, if I want to just add something directly uh, from, um, you know, from, the, uh, from my own computer, or much better, I'm an instructor, I want to prepare my courses whenever I want, even when I'm on vacation, outside my working hour, whenever I want, I want to prepare my material. So I have my virtual 
shelf, you know, when I can put my documentation, then I just click on that. These are all documents I have prepared before. So when I go into the room, I just select that, I save it, and the system is going to launch it. So now I'm going to launch, for example, a Google slide, right? And, uh, and this is a work that I'm explaining. Or maybe I go back, clicking simply to the classroom tab where I can see all the students. And by the way, when I click on this, you know, all the tabs will open also for the students. So I'll be able to navigate the students too. So uh, let's say that I have the ones that I selected as a presenter. I can go to the sitting charts. I can put the presenter on top here now. So when I go to the syllabus, I can decide actually to place the, you know, those videos on top or, or actually to the, to the, uh, you know, to the right, it really depends on where I want to put them. So actually, these three students will be able to not only talk about the document that I see here, but uh, actually they could be able to work in real time on that and share that with the rest of the class. And then if I want to stop it, I want to go back to them, I want to ask them if they have questions or, or anything, I could do it simply just one click away. Now, this is what I can do with the syllabus, but let's say that I could actually launch, launch assignments directly into the system. I can import or create new assessments, um, assignments. And then, you know, I could prepare them, as I said, you know, similar thing as I'm doing, you know, for the syllabus. So if I go to this orange button called launch, then the assignment will be launched inside inside the room as an activity. So I don't need maybe this uh, first row anymore. I can actually, you know, take it off and, uh, and I use the old screen. So I see, you know, uh, an assignment or I can go actually to an assessment, a quiz. As in this case, uh, I have prepared actually, uh, you know, some simulations and you see that uh, you could actually import the create assessments or actually launch the one that you have prepared. You say, click on a creating new assessment. Then, quick example here, you give them, you know, uh, the, 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 ass the assessments are passed. Uh, you can put uh, some explanations over here. What is important for me to show you is that you can click on questions. And then once you click on questions, uh, you can actually have different options. You can actually add a new questions. And you see that you have actually quite a few options. You know, you have multiple choice, matching, short answer, true, false, descriptions, uh, calculations. You can do lots of things and you can create these questions or you can add it from a question back because maybe you have created uh, a few questions and you wanna just create one, just pick in as you wish, some of the questions, you select them and you add them directly to the specific questionnaire that you want to launch, you know, to the students, uh, or you can add it at random. So now here for the sake of the simulation, let me just run something, launch something here, for example, this human body. And this is launching, yes, this quiz. I can click on preview quiz now, and I'm launching something that I have created with uh, the assessment creator that is part of class. So you can see you can have pictures, you can have, you know, different type of, uh, uh, of questions. Um, and by the way, what you see now is actually my instructor experience because I'm sharing my screen, right? So you're going to see exactly how I see. That's why you see what I'm typing, okay? But when I launch these activities into the room, everybody here, all the students that I see present into this room, will have their own individual experience. So nobody will be able actually to see what the other ones are gonna answer, you know, into, into their form. And when they click on submit, you save the changes and this form will go straight to the system. The system can be easily set up to send back uh, basically the results of this form and even with the scoring, where you're gonna see actually the correct answer and also the wrong answer with the correct the, the answer that it should have been you know used for that each specific question. And everything actually then will go back into the online gradebook. So if I click on class management tools, I have an integrated gradebook. And I can see that uh, here now, uh, 
this is, hasn't been set up because it's a simulation, but just to show you that you will have actually the list of all the students and the list of uh, all the quizzes, and then you know the results for each one of them. But let me tell you that because, again, many of you are using a learning management system, we have a functionality here called learning management system. So if I click on that, I can actually launch uh, you know, a tab that is gonna open up. Now, for example, that's a Moodle website, but if I go click on LMS settings, I could actually decide you know, to integrate with uh, other LMS systems, or if I don't put anything, I could simply put the LMS URL over here, right? So once I do that, um, I could actually navigate this, the, the students into my own system. And then if I had created my own assessments into my Moodle or, or into my Canvas, I'd be able actually to pull them in and have the experience in the synchronous environment which is extremely important because today, if you put uh, uh, actually um, an assessment there, a test, they will have to take it in an asynchronous mode, right? So you can tell them, hey, go to the Moodle or, you know, or Blackboard or whatever, LMS system, go to the course and take your, uh, your assessment. What is the level of security there? How you can track them down? How can you actually make sure that, uh, you know, it's actually safe, that nobody actually had in them. You know, there are different ways to do these things. So here, you can actually drag it completely into this synchronous environment. So everybody will see his own quiz again. So when they click into the room and they go inside, they will pull up the form and this will be an individual experience. The advantage is that you can either create it with class or whatever you know, tool you're creating and using with your LMS system, you can use it. If you're taking it directly into the LMS system, you're doing in a synchronous environment, and then the results will go straight into the gray book of your LMS system. So you could actually use either hours integrated to track down all the synchronous activities, and then you can export the data, or you can use yours in any case. Actually, you can use both. Uh, you know, in terms of tracking attendance and things. But in terms of gradebook, you decide which way you want to be using this. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there could be some questions here and I'll, I'll answer them at the end. Now, uh, we have also the ability to do polling questions. Uh, presenter mode is a functionality that is not actually launched yet, but we will launch it soon. Uh, we have a whiteboard. We can browse the web. Actually, even just browsing the web, is a very, very easy experience. So you can actually prepare these web pages, have the list over here, or just add one on the fly while you're using it. So you have it there. As you can see, you have this orange button whenever it says launch. When you click on launch, this is going to open up a new tab. So because we don't want to disrupt any of the activity that is happening, you know, in this lab environment, because going back to what I was saying in the beginning, it should be a very engaging experience. It should be something where, you know, the students feel differently something that they're part of it. So it's not going to be boring. Uh, so you're talking about the specific syllabus here that you have launched, you're explaining this, maybe at some point you launch you know, uh, 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 an evaluation that they're taking a synchronous mode in 15 minutes, and then you want to launch actually um, a web page because you want to talk about something. And maybe this is not exactly the web page you were looking for. So you can actually launch it here, look for the web page, and only share the web page. You see the blue button share with class once you have the right one, because maybe you haven't saved there, but it's something that, uh, you know, you want to just navigate through that and you want to find, you know, the correct one that you're looking for. So it's, it's definitely possible to do it. Um, it. It happens a lot also, you know, with, with the video that maybe you can prefer them up front or maybe you don't have it, something that you remember. But anyway, you can have this fluid navigation. If you go through video, for example, over here, you can go and you have as an instructor again this window you know popping out and you know you have some simulations here that we have prepared and you can simply launch the video and you can decide whether you want to retain control or you want to give control to the students you know to play it at their own pace let's say they want to click and retain the control which is probably the best way to make sure that you have a fully synchronized experience i mean let's be 
clear today, probably, you know, if you're using a video conferencing solution, a way to share a video is actually by sharing your screen, which is not the best way to do it. First of all, for the quality of, uh, you know, of the, of the streaming that you get, but in particular, because, um, you know, you're going to actually lock all the rest of functionalities, nothing else that you can do if you're just sharing your screen. Here, I'm sharing a video. I can actually go back to the classroom and see everybody, uh, go back to anything that I was sharing before. And then when I go to the video, this is this new tab popping up. We, when I click on play, this will go on play to all the videos, actually. Uh, to all this desktop of all the students that you have. And actually, if I put pause, this is pausing exactly the same times for everybody. So if I'm pausing and then I want to decide that actually I had a wonderful video, I want a specific part of this video over here, I just drag over there and just put on place. And this can go on. So the systems will not gonna be requesting, you know, to download the heavy files or to, you know, to, to, to actually wait till your cache memory is half full or whatever. You know, it's actually designed for low bandwidth consumption. It's integrated with YouTube, but we're gonna be integrated with more providers. And it's the best way because at the end, what you're sharing is actually the link to that, but it's very consistent and within the classroom experience. So let me tell you also another areas of functionality. I mean, we have also sharing files. So when you know, the structure wants to upload some files, it could actually upload them. And as an instructor, obviously, I could actually launch them, you know, inside as an activity inside the virtual classroom environment in an asynchronous way. But if, you know, I'm a student, actually, I will find in the area of sharing files the files, I could actually even download them. So I'm not gonna be able to launch it to everybody as a, as a student, but I'm gonna be able to download it. And that's also important because maybe I, you know, I forgot to do something or for whatever reasons, you know, uh, um, even when the class session is over, let's say that this session runs two hours, you know, three times per week for the next semester, then outside of the session's hours, I, if I want to go back, I could actually still go back into the room. I cannot interact. I can do anything else with anybody else, but I can still access the sharing files area. So I actually can go there, click and download. So I can still do that. And if I go actually to class management tools, I've already shown, you know, the, the attendance, the grade book. I could actually even launch some uh, breakout rooms. So this is in beta. Till, uh, till the end of the month, so we're releasing this new functionality, but it's going to work in a similar way. For example, uh, as it's working today in Zoom. So for example, I could have all the students and decide to have them automatically or manually assigned to different rooms as I'm doing today. So you can create different rooms. It's like sub rooms within the main one. Now today in these rooms, they can do audio, video, they can do screen sharing in each sub rooms, but we're going to actually uh, done in the roadmap uh, what we're going to be releasing and working on for the next few months is actually to have more functionalities of interaction within each room and that only the professors, you know, with the ability to actually listen and go from room to room, uh, even without joining that. I mean, that's what we're working on. I wanted to give you something else about what we're working on, but, uh, you know, it, it's very important to have this breakout room. So it's important for us to keep on investing also in that side. Now here, uh, still on, on class management, and again, I invite you to obviously test all the functionality that we put over here, but for the you know, sake of the time here, uh, let me just show you some main ones. So um, we have a dashboard, and the dashboard is something that is gonna show me immediately as an instructor, uh, the experience, you know, uh, how much I've talked, how much is the talk time also from the students, the interactions and things. And, and I could even export these activities. And he actually in this area, uh, it's also very important to consider that we have an instruction area where, you know, depending if they're using a Mac or a Windows, let's say that they're using a computer Windows, right? So they're launching this and uh, an instructor had kind of, you know, forgotten how to create or release a class, how to, uh, to create an assessment or whatever. So they could just click here 
And although they have done taking the training, but you know, if there is something that I have never experienced before, we have actually created this uh, uh, easy to use kind of a structure area where uh, the system is actually guiding you through screenshot, you know, very fast to what you need to do and how to do it. So you don't need to go into complex, you know, manual instructions. It's going to be very fast and straightforward. Now, let me just stop here now uh, because the goal today was to give you a kind of an overview, but let me show you a couple of things. Um, as you can see, actually, I have a lot of tabs already open. I can still navigate through my sessions. Actually, I can close them when I don't need any more. But I want to show you also another functionality. When I have this gallery view, as you know, in a physical classroom, there are a lot of uh, body signal, eye contact, uh, you know, a lot of interaction that when you translate that into a virtual environment, you know, it's kind of going to get lost. So you want to make sure that you're always on top of your class, especially when you have several students, right? So in a virtual environment, you want to understand exactly who are the students actually are participating the most or the least into what you're doing. The bottom line for you is actually to have a very engaging experience. So you raise the bar because this is going to have an impact on the students. Now, you can actually reorganize students using the seating charts by using the participations. And this is what happens. And by the way, this is visible to the instructors, right? So they can see that all the students have been reorganized and uh, they could have a, a, a red, a yellow, or, or a green bar. And what is important is that the one in red are the ones that with the least participations. Obviously, this is a simulation, so this is, I'm not really participating into this, but uh, if I see the ones in yellow, that's the average of the class. And in green is above, but the ones in red are the ones that are not talking, right? Are the ones that could be shy because they haven't understood something. So it's important for me, uh, you know, to understand the ones that need to re-engage with or they need support. So this is you know, some additional information the system is giving me. Now, before jumping into a Q&A session, let me just shut, stop sharing this. I want to go back into my slides because there is a new functionality that we're launching in July. This is something that actually the, the, the professors, I mean, are, are asking a lot uh, all over the world. I mean, uh, and in particular because of the pandemic, uh, it's, you know, going outside could be problematic. And if you want to run an exam and a task specific, you want to make sure that, you know, you preserve the level of security, uh, you need also somehow to integrate a kind of a throttling tool, something that can allow you to feel more secure than uh, the students, I wouldn't say that they cheat, but you know, they're not looking at using something that is not allowed into an exam, you know, type of session. So, Here's the plot view. So the, the structure can actually integrate this type of view. So they're going to be able to see in real time, not only the video of the students, but next to them, they will see what they have in the desktop in real time. So it's not a spy software. It's not an intrusion of the privacy of, of the students, but actually showing live what they have. So in this case, for example, they are taking an assessment that has been launched inside the class. They're using class as the primary interface. And, you know, by looking at the video, obviously they're looking at the screen, but they could be looking at different things on the screen. When you look on the, actually on the real screen, you see what they have. So if they're using, showing as in this case that they're using, uh, you know, they're popping up with, uh, you know, with a form that you have launched and everything, it is fine. If you see that uh, launching, for example, you know, web browser because they're looking for the answer somewhere else or they're chatting with somebody, this is not allowed. And you could actually even reach out individually and tell them that you see that. And in any case, let me tell you that once you start the exam, you inform the students and they will have to click authorizing, you know, to share, you know, their desktop with the instructor, as simple as that. So it's, it, it's very clean and linear. Um, now, we have a lot of, of areas, a lot of interactions actually can happen into the classroom. That you just tell you that we customize URL, it's a full cloud-based solution based at AWS. Um, we will, uh, actually we can run also some simulations and with the support of uh, the A2Tech team, you can run some, uh, you can have some demo access accounts, uh, you can run some trials and you can test it yourself. Um, so 
you know, my goal today was to give you an overview, right? And then you can try yourself, uh, you can put your hands on, uh, on the software. And what is important is that I try to show you that, uh, you know, you can have a platform, you can have a good level of security where you can track down automatically all the students, all the activities that happens, you know, all the critical uh, activities that happens inside the room. You can have reporting, uh, you can even run assessments, you can have a different type of views. You can have the ability to share content, pull out activities, create even content or assessment inside the room, or use that by integrating it with your LMS systems and then have it on a single sign-on basis. Why this is important? Because a lot of structure are lacking you know, the basic tools. It's important because you need to drive your classroom. I mean, delivering uh, a virtual session, it cannot be just using a video conferencing solutions and just sharing your screen. It means a lot. I've been showing you a lot of different you know, options for interactions. And this is actually what this, what can replicate and go even beyond the experience of a physical classroom. We can actually, you can even record the sessions. We don't really put any limit today on, uh, on the, the, the classroom that you, uh, sessions that you can archive. Uh, you can have it archived locally or on our cloud. And as long as you're with us, you can access, you know, all, uh, all of your archives. Now, I want to just stop here now and, uh, and I want to just go back, give it to my colleague Sanjay to, you know, as the moderator, uh, if there is any questions that I, sh you know, um, I'm asked to, uh, to answer right now. Definitely. Uh, thanks, Massimo. And that was uh, quite insightful. Uh, I would like to uh, now invite questions uh, from uh, the audience uh, to uh, you know, ask the questions or doubts that they might have uh, about the solution, the efficacy, the various tools that are there on the platform. Uh, as Masimo mentioned, uh, these all tools are meant to plug the gaps which are existing in online or remote or virtual learning. Uh, as far as the synchronous learning is concerned, you know we all have wonderful tools, uh, the wonderful learning management systems. But when it comes to uh, virtual classrooms in a synchronous setting, we fall short of being able to share content, ask questions, assess assessments, assignments, and having group discussions synchronously, uh, driving the screen of the students and all of that. So those concerns are going to be answered by class. So uh, with that, over to, uh, over to the audience to ask questions, please. Uh, so that we can uh, answer them one by one. Actually, I see a question from uh, somebody asking about the video experience uh, not being smooth. Um, I can confirm that the video experience is smooth um, because during the sessions you were looking at the interface with the with the desktop sharing. I mean, uh, yeah. you were not present into class. We haven't been using class interface to have this session, but we've been using zoom and then i share my screen actually if in some cases you see the video you know just going a bit slow or something for example inside the class is because of the screen sharing and that's exactly our point if you're using class to run your session then you you, you know the the, the the actually the bandwidth requirement are, yeah. are extremely low and your speed is going to be very clearly smooth but in any case i invite you actually to you know uh, to, to, to try yourself uh, uh, using uh, using class and uh, and Sanjay and, and the editor team will be able to assist you. Yes. Uh, we can also uh, have questions one to one. If you would like to have a separate session, we are more than happy to get on a separate discussion. Uh, we already uh, you know are in touch uh, by way of emails. So do feel free to ask questions separately as well. But since we are here as a group, uh, we still encourage you to ask any questions or any observations uh, that you might have at this point. Uh, I hope you all like the solution and you think that uh, this would really plug the gaps which are existing currently uh, for virtually uh, held classrooms in a synchronous environment. 
Yeah, um, actually, I can answer a question that was even asked before. You know, the session start from some of the attendees that we contacted up front. Uh, sure. One is, for example, you know, about the concurrent users. So how many actually people you can have and you can handle inside a classroom? Well, actually, we can tell you that class is not setting the limits because when you're using class, you need to have an active license of Zoom as an instructor. If you're going for the one with 300 concurrent users, then you can use it with 100 concurrent users. If it's more or less, I mean, that's fine with class. It's important to consider that um, class is sold and implemented at the institutional level. So we don't sell one structure individual license. We don't sell packaging license. This is an enterprise software solutions going for the institution. So a university, a school, a uh, company going for corporate learning uh, type of activities, which it is just one straight implementation. We implement it through the LTI, if there is an integration with the LMS system or not, if they want to access it as a standalone model. But in any case, once we implement it, all the instructors, all the professors in that institutions will be able to use it. Will be able to use class in all their courses. There will be no limits on the class number of actually virtual classes that they can actually build and customize for each course. And inside each class, they can keep it as long as they want, as long as they they have a valid contract, obviously, with uh, with class. Okay, I think that uh, we we reaching the bottom of the hours that we have selected. I think we're good to um, wrap it up. Uh, Sanjay, what do you yes, think? One and last point. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure if I missed it, but I just wanted to mention that here. So. A uh, class is now generally available on all device types. Yep. So there is no restriction on any uh, device type that you might or might not have. Uh, you know whether uh, uh, whether whether an, an, an Android or an Apple or any device type, even a Chromebook, uh, you can access class uh, seamlessly on all device types. Yes, indeed. So full support for Mac and Windows, but also the students can actually even access it through tablets, Android or iOS and, and even Chromebooks. So we look forward actually to support, uh, to support you individually through, you know, assisting you going through your evaluation process to yeah. test actually class and hopefully implement it. Thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, it was a pleasure for me and um, and again, I hope that we're going to run into each other soon. Back to you, Sanjay, to close it. Thank you. Thank you, Massimo. And thank you for uh, thank, thank you to everyone for taking this time out to join. Hopefully, we'll have further discussions uh, starting from here. You know, any questions, feel free to write to us and uh, we will take it from there. But thanks once again, everybody, for joining the session today.